Hi, welcome back. Uh, today we have James Fowler. James Fowler is a visual artist and curator uh, with a Bachelor of Arts degree in Film and English and an early background in photography. In 2011, James founded the 10 by 10 Photography Project. Welcome. Thank, Thank you for you. coming here. Thanks, Sylvia. Why the, not only the LGBTQ community, but Canadian? Yes. Why, why that? Uh, we wanted to put some parameters on it. Like, you know, I mean, you can have, I just sort of wanted to have some, some boundaries uh, to sort of make it distinct from other maybe photography events. So, for example, you might have something that uh, is uh, based on someone's ethnicity. So you might have, you know, um, uh, you know, a queer Cuban artists or, uh, you know, black contemporary artists or African contemporary artists or something like that. And what happens often is the materials from maybe that particular culture are brought in, in and they're used in maybe a contemporary way or there might be like a basket weaving something that like that is uh, part of someone's heritage and then it's sort of done in a different way and it's sort of turned on its end. And I think something that's very distinct about doing something that is queer uh, is that when you think about growing up, um, the way I explain it is growing up, we uh, we have these expectations, you know, you're going to get married, you're going to have kids and all these things. And so um, part of our identity that sort of gets thrown in the air is when we don't sort of, uh, we, we're not going to be on that trajectory. And so in that disruption, we have an opportunity to amel ameliorate our lives, right? So we can make our lives better. We can design the, our lives the way we want them. And that's why I think this, you know, queer culture is so interesting is because with that disruption, you know, it's like you go through this sort of little bit of an identity crisis. And I think that, you know, doing that with, with an, uh, an art form like photography and having that disruption, I think what we can show is with an art, even an arts and culture trajectory, there is, there is a system through which we, we move. Uh, and when you, to queer it or to disrupt it, we have, again, this opportunity to sort of ameliorate the arts, make them better, make them more interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's why I think it's it's very a very unique exhibition. Yeah. Whenever, this isn't on my cards, but I was just thinking, when <laughs> when um, oh, don't pay attention to the crazy people over okay. there. Okay. Look, they're having sex. This is a professional, <laughs> and that's his oh, ear. Wow. That's his ear, you moron. <laughs> I need to hire a class of friends. Um, this it just struck me like as a child, right? Ten years ago. Um, <laughs> when I thought of sort of queer imagery, mm -hmm, artistically mm -hmm. speaking, I always went to like the Tom of Finland and, and all that sort of thing. Right. But it's so much, it really is so much more like it's... It is. And I'm glad that you brought that up because I, I curated a show at the Canadian, le uh, the Canadian Lesbian and Gay Archives last year called Queering Space. And one of the things that I find really problem or can be problematic with queer art is that queer art relies on these very distinct pillars. Um, so you have, on one side, you have homoeroticism. On the other side, you have some sort of social political commentary or, or, or art as activism. And I really wanted, when I did uh, Queering Space, I wanted to present queer culture through a very different lens. And so we looked at the places where um, queer, queer uh, people have congregated, you know, so we looked at things like bathhouses and why did bathhouses come around? And we had these amazing um, floor plans of old bathhouses. And when you look at them, I actually found them quite sad because they do look like these giant veal fattening pens. Mm -hmm. Like they, like, you know, the, they are designed there and, and, and it, it was like a, it was an industrialization of, of, of sex because it was sort of behind closed doors and you couldn't talk about it and how sort of things have changed. But we also looked at bars, how queers take to the streets through celebrations like Pride or through things like after the bathhouse raids in Toronto, how there were protests. Uh, and so continuing that into 10 by 10, I really wanted to show or have a work with photographers who could show a real diverse um, sort of vision of who queers are, how they present themselves, how we can present them, and that it's not just um, the stuff that perhaps mainstream or straight media would portray the queer community. So it's always the extreme of something that you know the Republicans can clutch their pearls and be like yeah. upset and go, oh, those dirty queers. You know, there's so I mean, being queer is so much more than just you know running around uh, in a dress on Pride kind of thing. And and I really wanted that to shine through. Um, <laughs> Not no, to say that running no, around no, in a dress Don't is back bad. Uh, I was actually I was out recently, and I and I uh, there's a there's a I'm I'm seeing more of a trend right now 
of uh, men wearing dresses, and yeah. they're not doing drag; they're no. men wearing dresses. It's a fashion. And just, yeah, and I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah. Flip flops and a and a little spaghetti strap number. I'm yeah. like, go for it. Yeah, I couldn't rock it, but yeah, you could. <laughs> yeah, you could. Maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also to to continue on the what we were talking about with the Tom of Finland and sort of mm-hmm. what that rep, what that sort of projects to the world, right? Not only the 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 conservatives and and the the people that might be a little right. taken aback by that sort of thing, but also you don't want younger gay men and women thinking that's what gay art right. is. Not right. that there's anything wrong with it because yeah. there's certainly a place for that. But I mean, there's it is so much more than it's than the it's so much more than that. You know, it's interesting because when I came out, I came out in a time in in the late eighties, early nineties in university, and there was still this sort of um, we we have these we you know we mo- we model our, ourselves after we have role models, and I think one of the great discussions that is happening right now because there are people who have survived. HIV AIDS and they're around we lost so many people to that epidemic uh, and that there are people around and they're talking about it and they're talking about what is a queer heritage Mm -hmm. and I think it's a really important discussion to have particularly with young people who are like hey look here's the beer sponsor and we're dancing around and we don't know why we're dancing around we're just this is a party Mm -hmm. what's the party about it's a celebration what's that celebration about and who sort of went before that Um, so yeah you can have your Tom of Finland and you can have those um those images and those themes happening, but there's a lot more, yeah. more to that it. Plus, exactly. So. Thank you, Mr. James Halder. Oh, thank you, Sylvia. Well, uh, we're going to continue to drink. <laughs> we'll see you very shortly. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>